What's up everybody? It's Lexi D here. Welcome to my channel if you are new here. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be talking about life after college, 10 years post-college. So I graduated in June of 2012, so in June of this year will have been 10 years. Kind of crazy to think about and actually talking about life after college is where I really started to find my, my rhythm and flow when I was really active on YouTube and putting out a lot of content. I found that there wasn't really a lot of content out there on this platform and while there were quite a few blogs, for me I was looking for video content and what you all, all will have seen if you watch those videos. If you're curious and do want to watch those videos, I'll have a playlist below um, that links you to all of my life, my life after college series. And so just in those videos, I was walking you all through the various things that I was challenged with, whether that was how to cope with different friendship dynamics, to more recently, it's how to deal with family dynamics, with getting back into the gym, with my career, with, all these different aspects that come with life and that noticeably have changes once you once you graduate. And so if you wanna hear more, then keep watching and let's get started. So as I've mentioned, it's been 10 years. And with that, I would definitely say in my life right now, the juxtaposition that I have instead of it being when I was in college, XYZ, and now it's XYZ, it's more so when I was in my 20s. So I'm now in my early 30s, and so that is a whole other transition period that has happened during this life after college journey. And so let's go ahead and let's jump into the various topics here. So one of the things, the one of the most prominent things that came to me during the first few months and just even years after college was this question of what is my life's purpose? I really went through what was called a life uh, or what was called a quarter life crisis wherein I was questioning my life's purpose, what my passions were and just what life meant for me. You know, having graduated, it's it takes a, a while, you know, going from, you know, preschool all the way to high school and then all the way through college was a huge accomplishment. And so getting to that point, you know, I definitely had markers for where else and milestones for other things that I want to achieve, like getting married and having kids and, you know, retirement. But those things for me have been further off. And even still, when you think about it, even if I was to have gotten married sooner in life and had a child or two sooner in life, retirement is still further off, you know? So I think just not being, being in this place where I didn't really know what was next and I didn't really know what was important to me because up until that point, I, like a lot of Americans, just fell, fell into the thinking of this American dream and of this idea of, working really hard and then and then you get xyz and the primary reason that i went to college and chose the degree that i chose was because of financial stability so my degree i got my bachelor's of science in business information management which is a combination of business administration and computer science i am currently an it project manager and i have been doing that since i graduated college and so that's a whole other thing for me now too of just what that journey has looked like and how I have evolved in my career. But when I first started off, it was such an overwhelming experience, all these different things that were coming at me. And so having that question of what is my life's purpose? And so where I'm at right now is I would say, the way that I take that question is to live life on purpose. You may say, see this as a cop out, but for me, that's how I take this. Is if someone were to ask me that, it's to live on purpose, to live mindfully, and to live intentionally. And so all those things really require you to hold yourself accountable. We all know we only have one life, but what that means is we, it also means that we are the only ones who can live our lives. So things that we don't like, things that we want to do, these are all things that we have to show up for. These are all things that we have to be able to stand firm in and so being able to do that can be very scary and it's something that is definitely a learned skill and so something else that I found myself coping with was loneliness I felt isolated from friends and from connections and I didn't really know how to grapple with it I distinctively remember having times where on the weekends I was reaching out to friends who were local in the area and just trying to reconnect with them and the timing just not working out 
now. It's kind of ironic the moments that you stop really hunting for something is when it comes to you. It's like now these days I have found that my last few weekends have back to back been packed with activities and I love it. It's just and at the same time it's not something that I feel like I actively need to seek out any longer. It is something that I feel like I have a good flow with my friends now but at that time I was severely, I was dealing with loneliness and I was dealing with severely a lack of what felt like social activity. Because, you know, when you're in college, you are, at least for me, especially living on campus, finding social activities was just kind of a byproduct of the environment that we were in. I lived in a house with some of who are now my closest friends. And so just going downstairs, you know, to eat dinner or just playing games, there, there was, it was an easy way to be social. Whereas when I graduated college, I went home for a few months and yes, I tried to reconnect with friends. And so that's something else that came up for me was the ability to reconnect with old friendships and seeing how those dynamics had changed. You know, we had all went off to college and so we had came back and just who we were was no longer the same person that we were before. And so being able to see like, how does this work in our friendship? Can we still be friends? I'm grateful to say that I've had friends for a long period of time and I truly feel like they are friends, but our dynamics have definitely shifted and I think they've shifted for the better. You know, as we grow, regardless of if you go to college or not, you're going to change, you're going to shift, you're going to proclaim some of those interests that maybe you were afraid of being judged for. And so with that, it can cause a period of time where you feel separate. And so for me, you know, being able to navigate those friendship dynamics and to change my expectations of people and to be in spaces where I felt tasked with accepting people and also being accepted as well and just seeing how how those have all kind of played out. And so with that came a period of, like I was mentioning, of loneliness and just not feeling like I was able to connect with others. I suffered with that as well because I felt like what I was going through with having a quarter life crisis, which is a time where you really question, you know, your life's purpose and everything. I felt like I didn't have many to talk to about that because I was fortunate that when I graduated college, I had already, I jump started right into my career. And so a lot of my friends were facing, you know, either unemployment or just not being able to find, you know, jobs that were what they were expecting. And I didn't have that challenge. And so I frankly felt a bit ungrateful to be complaining about just feeling isolated and feeling disconnected because I knew and I still know to this day how fortunate I was to have been employed and to have been gainfully to be gainfully employed as well, right? It wasn't like I was just employed, it was I was employed in a career field for which my degree was aligned to. And so there was just so much that I had to work through in that to even be able to say I can have gratitude for these things and I can also be lonely and once I started being authentic with my friends that's when I started to feel like our connections started to either the connection new connections started to form or you know older connections started to become revived and that was something else that came up was new connections and new friends and so I forgot what era that was that Drake came out with that whole no new friends but I can definitely tell you there was maybe a small like part of me that kind of bought into that just because I have friends that I have known since middle school. This year is actually going to also be 20 years of, um, will it be 20 years that, 20 years that I've known some of my friends in my life and that goes back to middle school. And so just having that foundation for me I'm, I am happy to say that having this foundation has also created friendships that feel unshakable, friendships that we can go years without talking and then we'll show up the next day and it will be like no time has passed. And I'm aware that that's not something that everybody has. Also, as a side note, I'm aware that just because you do have a history with some people doesn't mean that you need to create a future with them. Because again, people's, people change, dynamics change. And so, so the name of life after college, the word for it, I think two words, overwhelming and change every aspect of your life is going to shift. And so for me, even on a day-to-day -day basis in my career, 
working as an IT project manager. I was sitting in a cubicle for eight hours a day. I didn't really work with anyone who I felt like, like I could connect with. And so again, just with that isolation piece and going back to that quarter life crisis of like, what am I doing? What does this, all this matter? Like, am I just going to be doing this for, you know, 30, 40 years and then I retire? Like, where is the, where's the juice? Where's the passion in my life? You know, where's the times where I get to just laugh and laugh and laugh and there was definitely a dullness that was in my life for a period of time after college and you know quite honestly I might have suffered with a bit of depression it was undiagnosed I can't and I can't diagnose myself but just I look back on my symptoms and the way that I was and how I was moving about life and I definitely could have probably benefited from from therapy and that is something else that has come up for me over these last 10 years if you've been watching my videos you know that i'm a huge advocate for therapy it has helped me tremendously when i think back to relationships so when i was in college and even before then i really struggled with how i showed up in relationships i sought out relationships where i felt like i would be validated and wherever i was given attention and when you use those as your primary means for connecting with someone then maybe apparently then maybe obviously to some people then it creates dynamics where it's not necessarily the best because you're not focused on things like love care trust and respect and so therapy has definitely helped me come to a place where i feel more secure in who i am and feel more secure in just how i navigate life and also being able to step into my desire of wanting a relationship you know me being in my, me being in my early 30s you know and someone who does want a long-term partnership i know at one point i would have looked at someone like me and be like where where did she fail and this doesn't mean that i'm absolving myself of the responsibility of my singleness but what it does mean is I definitely acknowledge the challenges out here and I would so much honestly rather be single for the rest of my life than dealing with some of the people that I've dealt with. Like I, I just, whew, I don't even, I'm sure I don't even need to get into that. <laughs> you know, dating is, is a whole thing in and of itself. And so some other dynamics that have changed since graduating college is, is with my family. I have definitely found, so it's myself and my younger brother and with our parents our parents have been married for over 30 years probably together for at least 40 years and as i'm getting older they're getting older too and there's been health scares and just seeing how i've had to step into what feels like a parental figure role sooner in life than i anticipated and so that has definitely been something that has reminded me that i'm an adult not that only not to say that only adults deal with this dynamic, you know, unfortunately, some people who are younger have to deal with that dynamic sooner. But this is definitely something that is a part of, you know, the aging process and it's something that has become very notable and, and noticeable for me. And it's scary, you know, having to face mortality for your parents is also, you know, facing mortality for yourself. And I think if anything, for me, it helps me to remind me, it helps It helps to remind myself that no matter what, like that's gonna happen. We're, we're all going to have, you know, an end to our lives, but why not enjoy the ride while, while we get there, right? Like where, wherever I can, stepping into my desires, stepping into authenticity and just being assertive. So be assertion or assertive, assertive is my word for this year and that, I'm telling y'all, when you choose a word for a year, be prepared to be tested because I can think of different moments in which I'm like, yeah, it's time to be assertive here. And so, <laughs> but, be but I would say being assertive has helped me because it helps me to, to balance between being passive and being aggressive is finding that sweet spot of being able to share what I feel while also being respectful of the other person. And it has been a challenge at times, you know, I'm like every other person, I get emotional and sometimes I need my moments to kind of collect my thoughts, but it's definitely been a good anchor for me, that word in terms of helping me to really balance, like I said, those, those various aspects when it comes to how I can show up authentically in my life. 
So this was a video of me pretty much just brain dumping the last 10 years of my life after college. You know, at this point, I'm definitely more focused on the fact that I'm in my early 30s and what that even means for me. I'll, get, I'll tell y'all this real quickly. So I was in Vegas in Memorial Day and I kid you not, two people, I don't know if they were just joking or whatever, but two guys told me I looked like I was in my early 20s and I was very flattered. I was very flattered by that, you know? So, <laughs> so anyways, if you have any questions um, or comments, feel free to leave those below. I'll say that these last 10 years have been everything. They have been everything, uh, but overall, I'm in a really good place in my life in so many aspects, whether it comes to my career that is in a stable place and just everything that I'm learning and I have learned over the last 10 years, whether it's my health and just my mental, like I mentioned with therapy, ther ugh, I really wish people could see and witness how incredible how transformational therapy can be for you. It has just, I feel like it's brought me home. Like it's brought me home to myself in so many ways. So my physical, mental, emotional, me having a walk with God, you know, that's something that came about just a few years ago. And that has been transform transformational in my life as well. My friendship dynamics and just even, even with my parents getting older, just even still being able to talk to them and to connect to them, I know that I am very blessed in my life and I'm very fortunate and I am grateful for all of that. So yes, like I mentioned, if you have any questions or comments just about you know the life after college experience or even just as I'm heading into my 30s, you know, I think I have I have a video where I talk about lessons I learned in my 20s. So I, ha I will have that linked below as well. And if I didn't mention it, I'll also have the playlist of my life after college videos linked in the description. I'm just doing this a lot, you know. <laughs> Thank y'all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up and I will talk to y'all in my next one. Deuces.